right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. If you are a returning viewer, thanks again for stopping by. If this is your first time joining the channel, thank you for checking me out. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit that the like button, hit the subscribe button. It just helps the YouTube logarithm and helps to propel this channel forward and keep people um, finding the channel and hopefully keeping this uh, most importantly engaging and exciting for everybody that's watching out there. So. Thank you to those of you who have already done so. So as with always, we are going to jump in and continue our discussion today where we left it off on the last time. So uh, today's discussion will be the last one on the overhead panel. I, I can't believe I've, I've made it this far. It's taken me a lot longer than I originally anticipated when I sat down and contemplated uh, recording all these videos here. So thank you if you've, you've hung through for all of it and um, kind of a milestone for me to hit it today to, to do this one. So. The panel we've got to talk about here today is going to be the engine manual start portion of the overhead. So right off the bat, something to tell you about these switches here is they're actually not actual engine start switches. We're still going to use the engine master switches to start the engines, which I'll point out and, and talk a little bit more about in a second here, and I'll, I'll, I'll share some things with you about those. But so think of these buttons here uh, like more of a toggle switch that actually disables the automatic start interruption and the auto crank features the airplane you know normally uses during most normal days when we're starting the engine. So like I said, not an actual start switch itself, just a toggle that changes the mode, the, the way the starting system interacts with the engine itself. So normally, as I said, we start the engines using a panel down on the center pedestal, which I'll bring up the slide here and show you that. So these, this area down here, this is just um, you know beneath the, uh, the thrust lever uh, area, the, the center pedestal here, we have this the engine uh, starting panel. So these switches are the two here that we're talking about are the, the engine master switches that actually control the, you know, the starting and the stopping, let's say, of the start sequence itself. So normally, like I said, the, the plane um, being an Airbus and being everything hyper automated, it's, it's a brilliant you know, way that the um, the system functions. It just it makes it once again easier for us as the pilots, and um, you know the, the plane is actually doing a whole lot for us. Um, you know every time we start the engine, and um, let's see, we'll we'll talk about uh, just um, a couple things that I wanted to tell you about um, that specifically. So as I said, normally when you're starting the engine with these automatic protect protections active. Uh, the FADEC or the full authority digital electronic control, it's a, kind of the computer box that sits out at the, the engine itself, does a whole lot of computing for the actual operation of the engine. Uh, it will do a number of things for us. So just right out of the, the FCOM, I want to tell you exactly what those things are. So uh, the, FADEC, the FADEC, if it detects a hot start, a hung start, excuse me, a hung start, a stall, or a no light up, so these are um, uh, you know, malfunctions essentially with the start sequence. If there's a problem, the engine is starting up. Uh, it will announce a fault and identify the specific fault on the ECAM page. So it'll tell us exactly what's going on. And the uh, the system will actually run its own abort sequence. And um, if it uh, aborts a start in the ground, the, the specific actions that occur is it'll it'll close the high pressure uh, air valve. It'll close the starting valve itself. It'll turn off the ignition and it'll crank the engine after the start in order to uh, clear out any fuel vapors that might be remaining or residing inside the engine that, that you know found their way in there as part of the normal start sequence. And it'll actually make another attempt if it de de determines it um, able to do so, it'll, it'll try to start the engine again after it kind of clears everything out and, and does its thing. So as I said, it makes it really easy um, on us as the pilots. But like I said, this, this manual uh, start switch, um, it's actually um, a way that we can kind of override these automatic prote protections if, if there's a reason to do so. I'll kind of go over those and outline those in a second. Uh, but there's actually a, an actual procedure if we're going to be doing a manual start that's right out of the book where there's all these you know, specific steps that we have to accomplish and, and watch out for. And, you know, Basically, the, the thing to, to walk away with here is that if you're using those manual uh, start switches up there. As I said, it's an actual procedure to follow where the, the pilots are just now uh, doing the entire job of monitoring the whole start sequence and taking any appropriate actions if there was to be some sort of malfunction when we're starting the engine. So um, the next logical question, of course, you probably have is, well, when are you actually going to be using this manual start procedure? And like I said, a couple very specific um, things that the, the, the book outlines. It says, 
Um, you would use a manual start procedure after aborting a start because of an engine stall, an engine EGT over limit, or a low start air pressure. And you know the, the thing that strikes me about you know these conditions here is that you know it, it seems to me that you know if if you did have some sort of a malfunction with the start where you're really kind of unsure about things, you you probably as part of the whole process you have incorporated a call to maintenance control and you've kind of got some outside input. Because you know, of course if there's any a, a, any sort of circumstance where you think there's a problem with an engine, we're not just going to you know go off flying with it. We're we're probably going to want to get it looked at and it just. It strikes me as, as something that it's, you know, it's probably not a decision that, you know, we're just making alone as, as a flight crew as to when we need to do this, this type of manual start. So, and I've been flying the line for a couple of years now on this airplane, and, and I have still yet to see a situation where we've had to do a, a manual start. So, um, those are some conditions that the book talks about doing. If you've, you've already experienced one of these symptoms, say you could use a manual start. Uh, but also, uh, it, it outlines a few situations where if you're anticipating a problem with the start, you might consider using a manual engine start procedure. And that is, um, the conditions it talks about is, when expecting a start abort because of degraded bleed performance due to hot conditions at high altitude airports, <clears throat> an engine with a reduced EGT margin in hot conditions or at hot, or excuse me, high altitude airports, or for marginal performance of an external pneumatic uh, or, or an air cart, um, you know, starting unit on the ground. So uh, once again, th these, these situations are all quite abnormal. I've never seen this out on the line. And um, it, it is just kind of an interesting thing that most of us don't really have to think about every day, but it is there and it is available for us to use if, you know, we, we need to get the engine started or there's, there's some kind of problem going around that's outside of the norm of, uh, of things that are generally occurring to us uh, in our day to day. So, um, Let's see, let's just go back to the one of the slides there where I'll show you the lights test, just the, the possibilities that, um, or the possible things that we would see. Uh, if you were to re reach up and manipulate this, the, uh, this manual start switch here, all that would happen is it's just a push button with an on light that would come on just, just to tell you that that is the condition that you put the starting or, or the engine starters in uh, if you're desiring to do so. so. Um, pretty straightforward stuff today. Not a whole lot more to share with you guys about that topic. Uh, we'll finish up today with the, the Q&A section. I had another viewer uh, tune in and write a question. And um, his question is as follows. So first of all, thank you very much for uh, writing in. Uh, Arnold H., uh, I appreciate you watching. Um, Arnold had a question on, he was watching one of the earlier videos where he talked about the, the circuit breaker on the overhead panel. And he said, why does the circuit panel uh, 49VU not light plate incorporated? So this is a great question. It's digging kind of deep. I'm, I'm impressed that, um, that somebody asked this one. Um, what he's talking about, this, this 49VU, first of all, everywhere in the Airbus, they've actually they've applied this like number letter coding to each panel that resides inside of the flight deck there and it's you know if you know just one extra way for us to reference you know which panel is which and where do we go for certain things so um, you kind of got to get up and close and personal and you can see you know right here this is the 48 vu panel here and the one that he was asking about like he said was uh, just up here uh, it's kind of blurry because the the photo is uh, not the best resolution but it says 49 vu up there and that's the the, the circuit breaker panel on the overhead. And, and like I said, he just wanted to know why those um, positions on the over overhead weren't backlit. Um, I think it's a good question. And it's certainly something that in my mind, logically, you know, you might want to have backlit uh, for the purposes of finding these things in a dark cockpit, perhaps. I'm not sure, to be honest, why Airbus decided that those weren't uh, completely important to, uh, to, to apply the backlighting to. Uh, my best guess would be that, you know, after a while of, of flying the airplane, you, you do kind of get used to um, just what panel is what and where to go for certain things. And um, it is actually interesting if you look through the QRH, you look through different uh, various references and the manuals that we have, it will actually, it will generally always make a reference not only to the actual circuit breaker that they want us to go find, but it'll tell you it's on, you know, such and such VU panel. So as I said, it's just kind of one extra way to, you know, find your way around the flight deck. Like I said, the best thing that I could think of is that, um, you know, maybe, of course, it's more important to have the actual circuit breakers and their, you know, names and titles and, and uh, you know, location, if you, you recall that grid system that we kind of talked about between the, the letters and the numbers here on the, on the side of the panel. 
Um, that, of course, is, is the more uh, important thing uh, for us to know about, I suppose. We're going to pull these, these circuit breakers as needed. So um, probably not uh, <laughs> a, a phenomenal answer there for you, but uh, it's the best thing that I can think of and I can come up with. And I'm not sure um, if anybody else out there has some, some background on the Airbus engineering about why they did it, how they did it. Um, I would like to know as well. But uh, well, thank you very much for uh, writing in. Of course, again, Arnold, I appreciate you watching. So um, for everybody else out there, thanks again so much for tuning in. I hope you found this uh, a little bit uh, interesting. And uh, as always, if you have uh, questions or you're, you're curious about anything else as, as, uh, as concerned with the Airbus, please go ahead and leave a comment in the section down below, and uh, I'll try my best to uh, get those addressed for you. So hope you're all having a great day. We'll talk to you again soon.